Chapter 11, Part 2. Now we're going to look at another past tense called the past perfect tense or the pluperfect tense. Let's see how this works in, in English. We have the past definite tense called, or that I ate an apple. That means that someplace in the past, I have, I, there was some point of time where I ate an apple. So, and then we have, I have eaten an apple, which means that some unspecified time in the past, I ate an apple. And then we have the tense, I had eaten an apple, which means that I had already eaten a, an apple when something in the past happened. For example, I had eaten an apple when I saw the princess. Oh, there's a point of time in the past when I saw the princess, but I had already eaten the apple. So this contains the idea of one action occurring before the other, both of which are in the past. And it's the same in French and in English, so it's, it's pretty easy. Now, I'm going to illustrate this. I'm going to, we're going to, there's going to be a timeline going across the screen here. This is, this, this point right here is right now the present. So everything along here is the past. Now I'm at the present and this is the future. Does that make sense? Past, 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 present, future, 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 future. So if I say I ate an apple, that means, oh, at a point of time in the past, I ate an apple. Now, if I said, I have eaten an apple, all you know is that sometime I have eaten at least one apple in the past. You don't know what point it was at all. I ate an apple, specific point. I have eaten an apple, unspecific point in, the, uh, uh, in time. Now, if I said, I had eaten an apple, that means there's some point in the past and I had eaten an apple before then. So I had eaten an apple means that that apple was eaten by me sometime before this other point that I'm talking about. So keep this timeline in mind when you uh, translate it and it'll make things go a lot smoother. So how do we form the past perfect or the pluperfect tense in French? So we have, il avait épousé une belle fille. And what we have is épousé means to marry. You can see the word spouse in there. So that's the past participle, so married. And normally it's conjugated with avoir, and it would be so if it was he married, it would be il a épousé. He has married. But for the pluperfect, we change the helping verb from the present tense to the imperfect. So we're going to use the imperfect of avoir. So it goes subject, imperfect helping verb, um, and then the past participle. And then here's the direct object. He had married a beautiful girl. So we're talking about some past event, and before that, he had married a beautiful girl somewhere in the past, before the past event that we're talking about. So it's formed like the past, the passé composé, the perfect tense, but the auxiliary, the helping verb, is in the imperfect rather than in the present tense. It might be avoir, it might be être. So we have the sentence, il est mort en 1900. So, mort is the past participle of mourir. It's considered an intransitive verb of motion because you can die in that house of etre. So, it's conjugated with etre. So, he died in 1900. So, it's like we're describing somebody's life. He was born in 1850. He wrote his first book in 1870. He died in 1900. The end. So, he died in 1900. Now we have, il était mort en 1900. So here we've got the same construction except the auxiliary verb, the helping verb, is in the imperfect rather than the present. So we would translate that, he had died in 1900. Now when would we say something like he had died in 1900? 
if we said something like, he became famous in 1920, but he had died in 1900. We're talking about him becoming famous in 1920, which is in the past, but he had died in 1900, which was before then. So that's when we could say he had died in 1900 using the pluperfect tense. Okay, we're on a roll now. Let's go for another tense, we're the past and terrier tense. Now, fortunately, it's pretty much the same thing as the past perfect or the pluperfect, the same tense that we looked at, but instead of using the imperfect for the auxiliary verb, we're going to use the passe simple. So, il eut mangé le pain. So, mangé is our verb. He ate the bread. But we've got the, the auxiliary verb, eu. So, mangé is a past participle. Normally, it would be conjugated with avoir. So, if it said, il a mangé le pain, that would be, he ate the bread. But here we have the, instead of a, ah, we've got the passe simple. So we're going to translate that as had rather than has. So it's the same thing as the previous one where we used ave pretty much. The meaning's almost exactly the, the same. There's slight nuances in meaning, but in the translation, you'll just automatically smooth it out. So we have subject, auxiliary verb in the passe simple, past participle, and then the, the rest of the sentence. So we translate that, he had eaten the bread, which is the same way we would have translated, il avait mangé le pain, if this was the imperfect. Here we have, il fut revenu. So revenu is the past participle of revenir, to come back. It's an intransitive verb of motion conjugated with être. And so in, normally in the past tense, it would be, il est revenu, he came back. But here, être is in the passé simple. Il fut is the passé simple of être. So we would translate this as, he had come back. So it's virtually the same meaning and translation as the um, previous tense that we saw, the pluperfect um, or the past perfect. Now, this is a literary tense, not too common. Um, and the key for being able to recognize this is to, to recognize the passé simple of être and avoir, il eu and il fut. If you can't recognize that as a, the être and avoir, as a helping verb, you're going to get lost really quickly. Now let's look at the verb charts. Here's uh, the verb chart that you have in your uh, big dictionary. In my version, it's page 2183. Um, you should probably turn to that dictionary here, and I'm going to point things out. And this is the uh, conjugation one for arrive, and it's similar for all the other conjugations which um, uh, follow. In this box, we have the indicative, and everything that we've been doing pretty much is the indicative, except for the participles, which we have down in this box. So we have the, we've done the present and the past participle, but all the regular tenses um, have been, we've done the present, j'arrive, um, I'm arriving. We did what the dictionary calls the perfect, the passé composé, uh, I have arrived. Now, rive is conjugated with uh, être, so that's why it's je suis arrivé. Okay, we've seen the imperfect, j'arrive, so that was, I was arriving, I used to arrive, I would arrive. And now, uh, let's see, we, we've done the, the passé simple, the past historic, j'arrive, um, uh, I arrived. And now what we've done is we've looked at these two here, the pluperfect, j'étais arrivé, I had arrived, so the helping verbs in the imperfect, and je fus arrivé, the helping verbs in the passé simple. I had arrived. So we're eventually going to make our way through all of these tenses and moods, but uh, I want to give you a, a chart to help you here. And you can download this on the link on YouTube for this video. There's a uh, 
a link where you can download this. And this is a, uh, I've got a Word document you can download, and it's in the same shape as the previous one. So we've got all of the, um, the indicative tenses here, all the subjunctive tenses here. I'll go back to the previous one. We've got the indicative here, the subjunctive here, the conditional down here, got the conditional down here. Here we've got the participles, and we'll do the imperatives, and oh, we've got infinitives that we've looked at already also. So here we have the present tense, and I didn't put all the forms of arrivé. I just put the first person singular, but I've given you the English translations, all of the main ways that you can translate the present tense. J'arrive, or I arrive, I am arriving, I do arrive. The perfect or the past definite can be translated as I arrived or I have arrived. The imperfect was I was arriving, I used to arrive, I would arrive. The pluperfect is I had arrived. Now, you can't put this piece of paper in your dictionary for the test, but at CGU, you're allowed to write in your dictionary. So I would write these translations in your verb chart so that you can see how each of these tenses are uh, translated in case you for, forget. It would be some useful information to have. So the passe simple, I arrived, the imperfect, uh, arrive, j'arrive, I was arriving, I used to arrive, I would arrive, and the two we just uh, looked at now, j'étais arrivé and je fus arrivé, I had arrived. Now, maybe we could translate this as, I had been arriving. It's pretty rare that we would use something like that. I had arrived is close enough, and then you can smooth things out when you rewrite it and you have all of the, the context. So here's an exercise using lots of different tenses. And this is just a really good uh, practice exercise to see if you understand the tenses. This is one of the exercises you might want to come back to and try several times during the course. 